Luella. Written and illustrated by Margaret Hurd. This week's episode, Return of the Jackal. Luella. Woe is me. What a terrible day I'm having. What's wrong? asked Margaret. First of all, Michelle was upset in school today because Max Grundo, the drummer, quit the kissing practice drummies to join another rock group. And now I have a letter from Otis Jackalope saying he wants to marry me. Otis Jackalope? Wasn't he the guy you and your friend stayed with in California? asked Margaret. You got it, Pontiac, grumbled Luella. He sure knew how to romance me, but he's a phony two-timing jerk. Well, said Margaret, I'm going to Jan's place to practice singing with her tonight. Want to come, too? Thanks, but no thanks, replied Luella sadly. Ms. Dinglefritz will be very disappointed in me if I don't finish my history assignment. As soon as Margaret was on her way to Jan's place, Luella sat down at the little red table and hauled out her binder and familiar orange history textbook with Sir John A. Macdonald's picture on its cover. As usual, no sooner had she begun to work on her assignment, she couldn't concentrate and once again started daydreaming about Rapid T. Rabbit. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. The knocking continued until Luella finally got up to enter the door. Whoa, hi there, baby cakes. Like, remember me, do that? It was Otis Jackalope with a dozen red roses and a box of <gasps> chocolate-covered onions. Before Luella had a chance to say anything, Otis swept her off her feet and hugged her so hard she dropped her flowers and candy he had given her. Whoa now, chicky baby, are we putting on a little weight or what? Otis Jackalope marched right in and flung off his trench coat, hurling the sleeves straight into Margaret's collection of Franklin Mint carousel animals, knocking several of them over. Otis! shrieked Luella. That's my name, honey lamb, don't wear it out. Those ornaments are worth a fortune. Margaret will skin you alive if you've broken any. Look on the bright side, Dudette. At least she won't have to dust them anymore, if I have. Oh, you're despicable, sneered Luella. She scurried around anxiously to put Margaret's miniature horses and menagerie figures back into place. Miraculously, none of them were broken. What a relief. Otis then proceeded to plop himself down in Luella's favorite chair and rest his muddy feet on the little red table right on top of Luella's notebook. My history assignment, Luella shrieked. I've got to get it done. I'm failing this semester. Like, chill out, do that, said Otis. You don't need an education if you're going to run away with me and live happily ever after. Get out of here, shouted Luella, wielding a rolling pin. Say what, do that? You heard me. Get out of here. Thanks a lot. After all I've done for you, the fancy expensive dinner and all the boring childish merry-go-round rides I treated to you two. Get out of here or I'll have to use this, shrieked Luella, waving her rolling pin. All right, all right, I'm out of here, sighed Otis. Just remember, you owe it to me. I owe you nothing. Just hit the road or I'll have to call you a few names I'm not allowed to use on television. Late that night, when Margaret and Luella were fast asleep, they were awakened by loud music. At first, Margaret thought it was her clock radio, but it wasn't. It was only 1.30 in the morning, and she didn't have to be up for work the next day anyway because it was Saturday. Not only that, but the music seemed to be coming from outside. Margaret reached for her glasses on the night table. I knew it, groaned Luella. Sure enough, just outside the window, there he was. Otis Jackalope was serenading her on his guitar. Do you mind, interrupted Luella, you're waking up the whole neighborhood with that atrocious caterwauling. I can't help it, sweet cheeks, exclaimed Otis Jackalope. 
I'm wacky about you, and I don't care who knows it. Oh, brother, sighed Luella. If you ask me, I'd say you were just plain wacky, period. She'll marry me yet, I know it, sighed Otis Jackalope to himself. All I need is a little strategy. Otis walked to the nearest pastor's house and knocked at the door. Pastor Spike Hedgehog answered the door. Yes, how may I help you, he yawned sleepily. I want to marry Luella Snuggle Bunny, and I want to marry her now, said Otis Jackalope. These things take time. How be I book you an appointment for my marriage counseling session, say next Saturday afternoon, at around 2.30? Counseling schmounseling, grumbled Otis, fishing around in his pocket and pulling out a huge wad of money. I'll give you two thousand dollars if you perform the ceremony now. But it's four o'clock in the morning, groaned Pastor Spike. Even if it was a more civilized hour, I couldn't do it, even for two thousand dollars. How would you like it if I told the whole neighborhood you were having an affair with Luella's history teacher, Miss Dinglefritz? But, but I'm not. I know, said Otis, flashing his wad of money back and forth in front of Pastor Spike's face. But I'm sure you would feel funny if I told everyone you were. You can't threaten me, said Pastor Spike. Come on, please, Otis begged. All right, I'll go, sighed Pastor Spike. But I can't guarantee she'll want to marry you. Just be ready to perform the ceremony as soon as I bring her outside. At 4.30 that morning, Margaret and Luella were awakened again, this time by a loud knock at the door. It's probably that jackalope character again, grumbled Margaret. He's got some nerve. No kidding, sighed Luella. Maybe if we just ignore him, he'll go away. But of course he didn't. The knocking just continued. Margaret finally got up out of bed. I'll have to talk some sense into that crazy varmint, she sighed, as she put on her house coat and went to the door. But before Margaret had a chance to say anything, Otis Jackalope grabbed her by the hand without even looking or paying attention and pulled her outside towards Pastor Spike's altar. Dearly beloved, began Pastor Spike, we are gathered here to join this jackalope and this... Ah, uh, that's funny. You don't look like a rabbit to me. Meanwhile, not knowing what else to do, Luella picked up the phone and called Rapid T. Rabbit. Remember that jackalope character in California, she sobbed. Oh, yeah, replied Rapid T. Rabbit. What about him? Oh, he's here right now, and he's been hassling me all night. He wants to marry me, and he won't take no for an answer. Oh, Rapid T, I'm so scared I don't know what to do. Don't worry, I'll be right there, exclaimed Rapid T. Rabbit. Rapid T. Rabbit's heart sank when he shook the money out of his piggy bank. Only a handful of small change. Hardly enough to even catch a bus to LaGuardia Airport so he could take a plane from New York to Toronto and then somehow get to Lindsay. Richard, wake up! shouted Rapid T. Rabbit. That's right, Mr. President. Smile, you're on candid camera, Richard mumbled in his sleep. Richard, wake up! I need your help, shouted Rapid T. Rabbit. That's nice. I'll talk to you in the morning, Richard yawned. <sighs> you need my help? Richard jumped up. What's wrong? Luella's in trouble. I told her I'd be there at once, but I just realized I don't have enough money. Here, use this. Richard reached under his mattress and pulled out a sock. I was saving it for my own trip to Toronto to see Margaret, but seeing you've got an emergency on your hands, you'd better get going. Inside the sock was two hundred and fifty dollars. Thanks, said Rapid T. Rabbit. I'll pay you back as soon as I can. No problem. Richard went right back to sleep. Rapid T. Rabbit took the bus to LaGuardia Airport. One return ticket to Toronto, please, he said to the lady at the desk. She consulted her computer. I'm sorry, sir, she said. Everything's booked until Monday. Oh, no, groaned Rapid T. Rabbit. 
One of my best friends is in big trouble, and I have to see her now. Now what am I going to do? To be continued.